Welcome to the Money and Flow podcast, where cash and vinyasa flows meet. This is the first podcast that talks about how your money stories through looking at your ancestral lens can help activate your financial Welcome wellness to the plan. Money and Flow podcast. And without further ado, your Eugene host, Eugenie George. I think about the whoever named me, I think it's my mom, Eugenie, uh, Eugenie, Euphigenia, Euthanasia. That's a weird thing. It's like a lot of it is about death and maybe good genes. I don't know. Anywho, welcome to the Money and Flow podcast. I went on a tangent. I'm very excited that you're here. Today, we're going to talk about net worth. What the heck is it? How is it going to help you? Uh, my net worth journey. Okay, we're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We might shed some tears. We might play some Drake. Whatever we decide to do, I wanted to make sure that you knew about your net worth. And I and I know that a lot of people don't like talking about it, but it's really important, particularly for women and women of color, to see where they stand so that they can get their money right. I had to do the same thing. And also, this is free 99. So let's dive into the do- broke dope broke dope diaries all right welcome to the broke diaries this is where we talk about different times in our life that we were hashtag broke and trying to live our best life Today's podcast, Broke Diaries, is sponsored by Our Money Stories because it's actually a part of the chapter in the book. So I had the privilege to interview 25 great women of color, ranging in ages between 25 to 41. So that was really cool. We interviewed Latinx women, African American women, Native American women, and Asian American woman. And so this story is coming from, we're going to keep her name anonymous. So today we're going to call her Anna Wang. And if there is an Anna Wang that's listening, it is not you. So Anna Wang is a podcaster and she is an amazing person. But one of the things that we noticed was that she would save so much that she did not take care of herself, which is crazy because if you don't take care of yourself, things get worse. And so Anna was a great person. She was good with her money. But one of the things that she was really cheap on is she would not get her eyes checked. Now, for some of y'all, you're like, well, that's not really that bad. But if your eyes get worse and worse, then that means you actually spend more money. And I can give you a great example. I personally have done the same exact thing because I've been trying to achieve some goal or uh, sometimes I will neglect going to a doctor even though I have medical insurance because I guess I'm afraid. So for the Broke Diaries lesson today, if you have something that is pressing with your health, please go and do that. Even if that means sometimes you might have to dig into your savings Or even if that means that you might not save as much in your bank account. Think about that. Uh, I need to go to the dentist. I have one ugly tooth that is just hanging and it looks terrifying. And I'm very scared what this tooth and what it's going to look like in pictures in the future. So I just scheduled an appointment with my dentist. So I say all of that because your health can give you long-term effects. So really think about what you want in the future. All right. All right. Welcome to the net worth podcast. Okay. Here's the thing. I don't really like talking about network that much, particularly because this is a financial wellness podcast. So there's going to be a lot about 
finances that you have to learn through your behaviors, behavior economics. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff that you have to learn about your habits, your mindset, in order for you to really maximize and understand your net worth. So your net worth is determining where you stand with your money. So it is your the value of all your assets minus the total of liabilities, okay? Uh, I believe future said, that's a liability, all right? So that means the liabilities are something you owe, assets is something you own. Now, here are some of the examples of an asset. Your home, your car, collectibles, household items, retirement, investment, jewelry, cash, savings. All of that is something that you own. I checked and looked to see if Beanie Babies was a collectible. And to my chagrin, it is not, which actually makes me a little excited. Because when I was a kid, I kept saying, y'all, listen, Beanie Babies aren't going to be worth that much. I'm telling you, you spend too much money on these purple heart bears. Anywho, I digress. So that's an asset. Something that you owe, okay? That's auto loans, student loans, credit card debt. Uh, other loans, home mortgages, whatever that principle is for your home mortgage, that is something that you owe. Now, for the longest time, I never really looked at my net worth because one, this is going to sound crazy, but I didn't even know what the heck that was. I didn't know. No one told me about it. I just knew that I would get a FICO score and it would kind of tell me this nebulous number and it would say oh it's because you have this credit card and you have this and this is how much you owe and I never ever put two and two together also I didn't become really serious about my finances until I was 28 and that was because I started a business ran out of money got evicted from my apartment I don't really talk about it that much this is probably the first time I've ever said it out in public but it was a hot mess like I thought I had everything together and I did not, and I'm still kind of reaping those, uh, reaping, <laughs> it's not even reaping, it's like I'm still feeling that, those pains from three years ago, four years ago, but the positive thing is, now that I know, I'm able to celebrate the wins that I have, and I also know that the career that I'm getting into is more lucrative simply because I'm creating the brand, I'm creating the path. It's not really talked about. Financial wellness is a conversation, a topic of conversation, but people are not talking it, talking about it through the lens of ancestry. They're not talking about it through laws, through habits, through patterns. There was actually a Breakfast Club uh, interview the other day with Byron Allen, and it was the first time I had heard someone that was of his status talk about uh, equity and inequality. And for some of y'all who, if you don't know who Byron Allen is, he's an African-American entertainment consultant, CEO, all that stuff, good stuff. And he's really nice. He's like a really nice man. Uh, And he was clapping back at a lot of people. And I really respected that just because it's nice to know that when you're putting in the work and you see your negative net worth, that somebody's like, if you keep pushing, think good things are going to happen. So I say that because I didn't even know what a net worth was or my net worth was until I was 28. And the crazy thing about uh, not knowing what my net worth was, was just like, it just wasn't a topic of conversation unless someone was someone famous net worth appeared, right? You would hear, oh, Beyonce's net worth is 1 billion, like holler, but no one ever said, okay, like how can we also get there? Or what would we do if we had that type of money? Or what the heck is a net worth? So it's really cool to hear about how people are successful, but it's for me personally, it's nice for me to know that people put in the work. Um, or not necessarily put in the work, but just knew how to do the things that they love and make a certain amount of money so that they can survive and thrive, right? 
So I know y'all wanted to hear exactly what is my net worth. Well, it is negative $75,000. Now, I, when I say it out loud, I feel the pain in my heart. <laughs> but uh, anytime I tell someone who is a financial planner, hey, I'm you know in my early 30s, here's my negative net worth. Let's talk about it. Everyone keeps saying, okay, cool. Let's just move up forward. I think it's just because when you're getting, or I think the way I, I did it, and I'll, we'll break down some things too. Uh, I'm going into financial planning, so I do have a leg up, which means that when you go into financial planning, you're learning about money, you're learning about stocks, you're learning about bonds, you're learning about how to allocate assets and helping other people do it. So that will, in the long run, within the next five years, become lucrative. So yeah, it's a very different conversation when you're deciding to go into finance. And and we could talk a lot about that. Or if you want to email me if you have any questions. Uh, if you go into teaching and you have a six-figure loans, that's when you got to start thinking about, okay, how how am I going to get out of it? But for me, I actually paid off all of my undergraduate student loans. So I didn't have any student loans at the time. Um, so when I decided to go back to school to get my MBA, I went with a school that my mom, my mom was a part of this uh, school. So I didn't have to pay for most of my tuition. So that's why it's 75, which people are like, that's crazy. That's still expensive. It is expensive. And I'll tell you about that real quick. Uh, I, the school that my mom used to work for was a for-profit. No, I have no clue, but it was free. So I was like, okay, cool. Right before I graduated, which was in March. So this was March, 2019. I received a letter that said, hey, BT Dubs, um, your school is closed. So I was like, what? You're kidding. And it was my last class. And they said, well, you're not going to have a, a degree. So when I was going to leave school, I would have had $25,000 in student loans because I took out student loans so I could be able to write the book and research and have time for just regular life. So I would have only had 25,000 uh, and then things just kept changing. So I decided to continue school, which meant that I had to take four more classes. Uh, that really upset me because I was supposed to be done, but I had to take four more classes. And during that time, I'm just being completely transparent. Uh, I was a mess. Like, I think I everything that I did, I just shut down. Uh, I, I shut down completely. I didn't know I had, you know, lost the confidence that I was supposed to have. I had pretty much ended or canceled any type of meeting. I remember I wanted to apply to my uh, dream job and I completely sabotaged it. So it's just like, it wasn't a good space. And I don't know how many times I have to apologize or whatever or keep going, but it was a, a rough six months and I was still doing the podcast. I was still writing the book. I was still interviewing people for the book. I was still trying to figure everything out and it was a hot mess. So I say that because a lot of folks were probably thinking, well, who is this person? I need a successful story, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of positive things uh, in my life I also wanted to let you know that you're not alone like if you're in that spot where you're like okay I'm applying for jobs I'm trying to figure out this next piece in my life or if you're in this space that's okay I'm already ready to level up if you're already ready to level up there's a resource page that I have where there are tons of people that can help you level up that's not the problem but when you're going through the trenches and no one really hears what you're saying that really affects your mental health and I think it was really hard for me to even talk to people about it. I kind of just shut down, which a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, that was kind of like the big thing. So I could kind of break down the network thing, but here's what you need to know. All you need to know is that 
the biggest costs that I have right now are my student loans, okay? I have two 20K student loans and then one 16K student loan. I have a car note, but the car note is 7,000 and it has a 1% APR. So um, that 1% APR, like that's not a lot of money accruing in interest right now. So I'm just gonna pay the, the fees and call it a day. But the student loans have the highest APR. The credit cards, I have one credit card and that's pretty much it and I owe a grant on it. So I have a file cabinet, I have everything in order and I'm about to talk to my financial planner, Christy, that's a little plug from uh, En Route Financial because she will help me figure out all that stuff. Um, in terms of like retirement, I have some retirement. I have a Roth RA. Um, I have a 403B. It's not that much. So I kind of just kind of focused on paying off that debt and also really focusing on paying myself first. All right, so here are the practical steps with resources to help you organize your life and figure out what the heck's going on with your net worth. I say this because looking at my net worth has made me realize, uh, girl, you need to get a job. Second of all, it made me realize that the way I have to look at entrepreneurship is a lifelong process plus. What it also made me realize is a lot of people that I respect and admire they don't talk about it but a lot of them have full-time jobs and they're doing uh, another stream of income so i'm just in my mind i'm not saying quit your entrepreneur job i'm not saying become an entrepreneur all i'm saying is i've just done a lot of research in it and i'm going to make sure that you have the right steps for your you your personality type now for some of you you're thinking uh, I don't even know what my personality type is. I don't know how to schedule or organize my life. Let's break it down. Step one, let's organize your life. Schedule a money date. What is that? You write in your calendar, your Google calendar. Hey girl, hey boy, hey. This is the day that I'm going to plan out my net worth, okay? What's my reward for it? It's gonna be a glass of wine. Okay, sometimes I like to plan with a glass of wine. It just makes things easier. If you are an alcoholic, do not do that. But for me, it does soothe my nerves when it comes to planning out my money. All right, so schedule it in your calendar. The next thing is you schedule it in your calendar, but guess what ends up happening? Uh, you don't go. That's very normal. Things come up, you get too busy really attend the money date, which is step two, okay? It's the simplest step, but it's the hardest step. It's because your brain is telling yourself, we don't do this. We don't look at our net worth. This is not what, what we do. We have to start doing that because particularly women of color, we have to, we, have to. we just have to because not everybody's looking out for us. It doesn't matter if we are married or unmarried or not married or what have you. Like the truth of the matter is, is that unless we create our table or build our own table, we're not going to get to where we need to get to. And I hate to say that because I'm all about all of our magic, black girl, brown girl, all that good stuff. But if we're, if we're not taking care of it, then clearly other people are taking care of it because we owe them money. All right, step three. When you're in your organizing money date, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna print out all of your bills, your statements, your everything. You're gonna get everything out on the table. I can tell you how many times I've left an important bill behind and said, uh, you owe a lot of money. So you don't do that. Do not get stuck in that, okay? You don't want to have that financial hiccup. It normally happens, but you want to get to the space where you know, okay, I owe this person money. Okay, I owe this person money. Get everything in a file cabinet. What? This is 
what is this, 1990? I get it. You don't want a file cabinet. You don't want an accordion binder. You want everything in the cloud. Yes, that's important, but you have to get all of these files out so that you can see where you're at. If you don't know where you're at and you can't see where you're at, you can't set goals. You can't set financial benchmarks. You can't get to the place where you need to get to. Now, here's another thing. All right. Let's say you did that. You get all the file cabinets. You get everything. You're like, okay, Eugene, I'm ready. I'm ready. Now what? Well, this is actually the time where once you're done with that, you could either reschedule another date, money date. And a money date is just a time that you schedule with yourself and your money. You could schedule another date and say, okay, I need inspiration. Okay. Because when you look at your money, it is sometimes it can be a really stressful thing. Sometimes it can be really empowering. But for the most part, if you're never checking your net worth, it's going to be an emotional experience. I haven't checked my net worth in like four months because of all that stuff that happened. I didn't check a lot of things, which is why I gained a normal amount of weight because I was eating a lot of cookies, okay? Um, if you don't check it, then clearly that's when you start getting 